Here with us to discuss the consequences for European trade and the Eurozone economy is Lord Leon Britton. Lord Britton was a senior member of Margaret Thatcher's cabinet and vice president at the European Commission, responsible for relations with the U.S., China, Japan, and the World Trade Organization. He is currently a vice chairman at UBS Investment Bank. Lord Britton, let us talk about the euro because this is a subject of keen interest to UBS clients. The silver lining in the euro's weakness a few weeks ago was supposed to be that it provided a boost to exports. We saw some evidence of that in German GDP figures. What's going to happen now that the euro is resurgent? Is it going to imperil the export-led recovery? Well, obviously, uh, it's harder to export if your currency uh, is stronger. But on the other hand, why is it stronger? It's a sign of the strength, growing strength of the European economy. So in one sense, you can't win. In the other sense, you can't lose. Uh, I myself think that what we're going to see is a modest, continued growth of the European economy, uh, what the markets do about the euro is more difficult to protect, but I think that irrespective of that, the strength, the underlying strength of the dynamism, if you look at the corporate results of major European companies in the last few weeks, they are quite impressive, particularly in Germany, but not only in Germany. It has been an awfully bouncy ride since early this year for people trading the euro or trading in the euro. What do you think is a bigger issue for companies and for policymakers? Strength? or levels of strength, relative strength, or volatility? I think volatility is the greater problem because uh, uh, business can deal with any situation if it's known to be stable, uh, good or bad, it adjusts accordingly. Volatility is a hell of a lot harder to deal with. Now, $1.32 is not strong relative to where the euro has been. At what point do you feel policymakers are going to become concerned over the absolute level of the euro versus the dollar? Well, historically, policymakers have not genuinely not had a target for the uh, relationship. Uh, it isn't just that they've said they haven't, they really haven't, uh, because the target is inflation uh, and other things. So I don't think, uh, and obviously if something absolutely wild happened, that might change. But historically, they've not had that target, so I don't think you should expect any kind of action relating to the uh, exchange rate alone. No tensions, though, between those who favor a weaker currency versus those who would like to see it strengthen some? Uh, much less than you might expect. Uh, I think the tensions exist, but the tensions exist between those who favor dealing with budget deficits fast and those who think that the recovery is too fragile to do that. And we're seeing that Germany, for example, in spite of all the world telling it that it's got to expand consumption and it owes a duty to buy other people's things, is nonetheless focusing on reducing its budget deficit. The UK, my own country, is massively doing that. Big time. Uh, so those are the disagreements and of course the US administration has tended to uh, say steady on, the recovery is fragile, don't go too far in reducing budget deficits and much of Europe feels that the debt levels are too high to take that advice and they're going ahead with uh, budget consolidation in a big way. Let's shift our attention to the other side of the globe, to China, a country uh, you've spent much time in and on which have. you're an, uh, a qualified expert. Um, Today is the day that Geely completed its purchase of Ford's Volvo unit. Right. Much anticipated, it's actually closed finally. The question I have for you is this. When you look at China and the government's acquisition strategy and the collaboration and cooperation that exists with private industry in China, what is more important, resource independence, because we've seen a flurry of energy deals, or technology transfer, the kind that they'll get through Volvo? Well, the people who are actually handling this in China absolutely insist uh, that technology transfer is more important uh, and that uh, resources will be bought on an opportunistic basis, but only if that itself is a profitable, viable acquisition. That's what they say. Uh, I think the, the numbers tell a bit of a different story, though, in as much as resources have dominated the mergers correct. and acquisitions activity correct. out of China. But it may be that the resources uh, that are bought are also going to be profitable. Um, I think that the answer is that there is, I, I know it to be the case, that there's disagreement in China itself as to which should uh, uh, prevail. Uh, and that sometimes it's one and sometimes it's the other. And what you're going to get is a bit of both. I don't expect you to get a clear steer. They'll continue. Who 
hoovering up the resources when they get the acquisition opportunities, but at the same time they'll buy other things to get the technology transfer uh, when they see those opportunities there. And, as we know, they are in a position to do both. They certainly are. Lord Britain, a pleasure to have you here.